there's been a lot of announcements at Cisco Live, and especially in the DevNet zone. Whenever we do these events, um, you can expect there's always announcements. Yes. Do people come to the DevNet zone and other parts of uh, the conference sessions to learn things they were expecting to learn? Yes. Do they also come to listen to keynotes and things like that to also hear what is Cisco announcing? Absolutely, because, I mean, that's what we want to hear for. So, Tushar, one of the big trends in general in the world, and in specific for Cisco, is the concept of AI. Yes, AI has been around for a long time. Anyone out there thinking, yeah, no, we know, AI is cool and all that, but Cisco's been using AIs forever, as has mo most companies. In many cases, they've been narrow-focused, your NLPs and things of that nature that do specific things for us. But the, what we saw a couple years ago when OpenAI um, or uh, AI came out with ChatGPT, it made it feel much more ubiquitous to people in a way that they never expected before. So of course Cisco is actively thinking about that. And I really wanted to give you a chance to kind of talk through um, some of the recent announcements we just made this week, and we can kind of get into how that affects people who are watching. Yeah, absolutely. So going back to your point about generative AI, generative AI is uh, you know, an evolution in some ways of what AI has been able to do. Um, you know, we've kind of had discussions about um, AI that is able to perform specific tasks, but what generative AI has really done is expand the um, gamut of what you can get done through machine learning models and uh, make them a lot more uh, uh, capable of solving high, you know, more complex tasks and more open-ended tasks than they could before. Uh, you're absolutely right that uh, Cisco has been, uh, you know, using AI in a variety of ways, both internally for employees, uh, in their uh, public-facing assets, like their websites and documentation, etc. But then also in uh, and across all the product portfolios that they have, right? Uh, and Genia is no different, right? I think uh, we'll see that uh, with the new capabilities that Gen AI has been able to enable for a lot of customers. We'll see the, the usage of Gen AI in Cisco across internals, uh, for you know, supporting employees, for the assets that are not really product, but more of the web content and uh, you know, the web experiences that people have with Cisco, and in across all the Cisco products that we have so far. Right? So in that sense, um, that journey of adopting generative AI is no different for a lot of other customers. Right? They're all scratching their head and saying, okay, are there different use cases that we can use this for so that we can unlock you know, next level of productivity for our employees or we can drive innovation much faster or we can just you know, do something in a lot more efficient way. Right? So um, in that spirit, what we announced is a new product called Motific. And Motific is a SaaS product that helps central IT teams uh, deliver uh, Gen AI in their own organizations in a rapid and trusted fashion. So it's really aimed at accelerating the generative AI adoption journey for a lot of companies, um, and uh, we're super excited with uh, the feedback that we're getting from customers. That's awesome. I, you know, it's something I really want to hone in on what you just said, and it brings up a particular word for me, which is safety. Um, I like the idea of, I, I've been following uh, uh, a few different AI institutes as, as different uh, announcements are getting being made by Gen AI companies or you know your mid journeys and all, all these things that have been coming out. But most of that is more consumer facing in a lot of ways. So there's you know there's warnings about like be careful about how you're doing this, etc. But so many people, I mean most everyone that's here works for some company, and while they want personally to use these technologies, there is a concern about how is that going to, how can I do that safely in our company environment? And for business leaders here, they're like, I would love to, I like, I, maybe they would love to, some are probably very hesitant, but the idea of being able to do it in a safe and, and ethical and control, like inclusive but controlled manner, I think is really, really important. How does, how does the announcement of Multific and how does, how does this hope to address some of those use cases for our customers and partners? Yeah, no, I think that's such a good point. So. Um, what happened when uh, generative AI sort of burst onto the scene uh, is the same concerns that you called out with respect to security, with respect to compliance, respect to privacy, and trust, and cost. There are several sort of dimensions which uh, you know, companies saw new challenges with, right? That weren't really there in task-specific models that operated in a very narrow domain. But with generative AI, where the user could 
uh, you know, interact with the models in a much more open-ended fashion, some of these risks became a lot more prominent. So the way that companies responded to that is by, you know, telling their employees to not use some of these uh, models, uh, you know, with the company data unless they were sure that all of these concerns could be addressed. And so in that sense, uh, what Motific is inspired by is very much helping organizations address these challenges um, in a way that is repeatable, centralized, standardized, and templatized, right? Um, just kind of give you an example. Uh, Motific, uh, you know, we actually were uh, very closely engaged with uh, the Cisco's own journey and Cisco's own, uh, you know, teams that were focused on making generative AI available to employees, right? And what we saw was a journey where um, you know, they sort of made an assistant available, they made some APIs available, and they're on the path to making knowledge bases available to employees so that their queries are answered on the data that is relevant for them and not just what the model was trained on, right? right? Uh, in that journey, uh, what Motific tries to do is to make this entire journey of making Gen AI capabilities available to their own employees very fast, right? because we give them the ability to uh, provision assistance and abstracted APIs to virtually any model, right? Connect knowledge bases from their environments to the assistant or the API that they're using, attach a comprehensive set of control policies, and gain end-to-end -end visibility into the entire interaction that is happening between the user and the model in such a way that that usage is done in accordance with all the company policies that are applicable to that interaction. Gotcha. I, you know, it's really amazing to hear that because I, as I mentioned the word safety. So many people and business leaders are, are very concerned about that. And I love the fact that through Motofic and through our experience, Cisco's broad experience with AIs in general, we have a really good background. So I guess that does kind of beg the question, why now? Like, and, not, and of course, there's always the obvious reasons of like, well, this is when we were ready for it. Yeah. So like, yeah. we finally got the product working. Yeah. Yes, they could be some of that. But I think more on the existential side, why now? Like, why did we choose to release this, not just at this Cisco Live, but in general at this point? No, no, great point. So a couple of things, right? I think with the advent of the generative AI, uh, you know, capabilities in machine learning models, um, the initial set of time that a lot of companies spent was on determining, uh, you know, where would this be useful? Uh, sort of doing some form of experimentation, figuring out uh, whether they wanted to apply it to their external use cases or they wanted to apply it to their internal use cases first. Right? And I think what we learned from companies was that they're now at a point where, uh, you know, they've sort of done some of that initial thinking, but they are now trying to kind of find solutions that can help them take these projects from perhaps you know projects on paper to uh, experimentation, uh, you know, um, and and in some cases to production, right? So we felt like the time is right, uh, you know, now uh, in terms of helping these customers um, take these projects which are being done by their own developer and, and development teams in Skunkworks fashions, right? Uh, with the same developer team trying to fix all the compliance issues, the knowledge base issues which are frankly repeatable things which can be made easy for them. And so we felt like the uh, you know, customers have understood that this is a good pain point that they need to solve. Um, and customers are ready at some, in some ways to sort of you know, adopt a solution that helps them solve those in a rapid fashion. Uh, so if we feel like this is uh, uh, you know, uh, as good a time as it can be in terms of uh, making such a solution available to them. I, you know what, I, I'm going to channel some of the feelings I would have if I was you know, not working at Cisco, working at com a company and in this position of making the decision around when, when do we dabble into this. And I think I, I really appreciate how you're describing why Cisco decided now was a good time. because. In addition to the things you described, and I love that you call it a skunk works, the idea of a skunk works and people trying it, we've already seen this. As soon as Gen AI, Gen AI in a user interactive sense came out, it, it took off like wildfire. It, it became, and so I think business leaders everywhere are realizing 
we're going to have to do it sooner than yes. later because the longer we wait, the more people are just going to do it anyway, Absolutely. and we will have no control over it. Absolutely. But And you do want to test with it, and you want to have that Skunk Works ability, but you also have to balance that with, we're going to have to do something because we need to have our own controls around it so we can do it safely and people can feel like they can take advantage of it. But if you do, if you over rotate either way, you're gonna lose control of what happens and then it becomes unsafe or it becomes exclusive and leaves people out and then you have a whole other set of problems you have to deal with. Um, this is fantastic, I love hearing this. How, what would you, for anybody watching, what would you encourage them to do at this point with Multific? Like, do you want them to really dive in immediately or what would you like them to do with it right now? Yeah, no, great point. So, um, so we've announced Multific uh, a lot of the content around what Motific is, the problems it solves, how it works is available on uh, motific.ai. Okay. So I would encourage uh, you know uh, customers to uh, learn more about Motific uh, from uh, you know by going to motific.ai, and uh, they have the opportunity there to uh, get in touch, request you know to get in touch with us, and uh, we would love to uh, engage with them to learn about some of the challenges that they are facing with their Gen AI adoption and. Uh, engage in a discussion of how Motific could help them address those challenges. Excellent. Tushar, thank you so much for joining. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you.